eventually my dad was able to buy a small liquor store in New Jersey. I was a very entrepreneurial kid. I was day trading attention from a young age. I had six lemonade stands when I was seven years old and I would spend all my time trying to figure out what tree and what pole to put the signs on because I was watching people drive and trying to figure out what signs. I was a very sick child. Um, (laughs) When I was 12 and 13, I was selling baseball cards which were very popular in the United States at the time and I was making one to two thousand dollars a weekend selling them in the malls of New Jersey which was great and I was rich for a young kid and it was fantastic but then my career changed. My dad dragged me into the liquor store and I hated it at first but luckily I realized that people collected wine. I was into collecting sports memorabilia. That was my passion, that was the connection and I decided that I was gonna jump into my family business, open up 4,000 liquor stores across America sell the franchise one day and buy the New York Jets American football team because that is my dream. You two stand up, you two stand up. Let's clap it up for these guys. In 1994, I was in my dorm room in college. My friend came over to me, and I wanna start wrapping this up and getting it to what matters to you. He brought me into a room. It was the first time I heard kukuch which was the internet, I was very excited about it. I didn't know what it was. I said something stupid like, is this the information superhighway? I looked at it. This is, you know, there's a lot of youngsters in here. This was 1994. I literally stood there and watched people on the internet for five hours. It was that crazy. It was just that insane. It was so new. And when I finally had my turn to go on there, when I finally had my turn to go on there, within 20 minutes, I landed on a message board where people were trading and buying and cards, baseball cards, and I realized, my God, I can do business on this thing. And over the next year, I went head first and learned about eBay, learned about what was going on in Amazon, started learning the early internet culture, and in 1996, I launched winelibrary.com, one of the first two e-commerce wine businesses in America. From 1998 to 2003, in a five-year window, I grew my dad's business from a three to a $60 million business on very, very important terms that matter to this entire room. I had no money. It was a $3 million business that had 10% gross profit, $300,000 before expenses. There was no marketing budget. What I needed is to make every penny work like a dollar. So the strategy became day trading attention. When you day trade attention, my friends, here's what you do. You don't overspend on what everybody believes is tried and true. Every single company in this gorgeous conference right now is grossly overspending money on things that they've been doing for the last decade because it's the things that they accept or the reporting justifies it or they're just lazy to try something new. Everyone, everyone. And so what you do when you day trade attention is you have to find angles, what's underpriced. How many people here do email marketing or have done email marketing in their lives? Raise your hands. Perfect, a lot of you. In 1997, I started an email newsletter. Most people that came into my liquor store didn't even know what email was in 1997. I collected, I collected, I collected, and in 1998, I had a 200,000 person email newsletter with 91% open rates. Now, it's not because I was a genius, and I know a lot of you sit here just like I do with emails that are 13 to 23% open rates today. It's that in 1997, nobody was emailing. We hadn't ruined it yet. One thing I promise you, more than I know that the sun will come up tomorrow, I know that marketers ruin everything. As I think about B2B players in this environment, it is stunning to me how many B2B businesses here do not understand that producing articles on medium.com, on LinkedIn, writing full content on Facebook in your feed and then spending a hundred dollars in ads against employees of the company that you're trying to reach. Let me say that three more times because the one thing I promised myself as I boarded last night in New York to get here is I'm gonna give my talk but I'm gonna give every single person in this audience one thing to take home, do, and then email and say thank you. So let me say it really slow. Right now, On this day, October 6th, right? Is that right? October 6th, 2016, the number one deal, if you day trade attention like I do, in this market is Facebook ads. They are underpriced. 
They are underpriced because a lot of people in this room still debate what the ROI is, or even worse, they're emotional that Facebook organic reach has come down and now they have to pay for it. While you're emotional and sad that you don't reach as many things, the best ad product that I've seen since Google AdWords has emerged. Or even worse than both of those two scenarios, you haven't even done it yet. You've decided for your business, your customer is not on that platform, yet you've never spent a dollar testing it to know if that's true or not. You've read a headline, You had a friend tell you, but you actually don't do it and you're not sure. We live in a world right now of headline readers. Everybody here has a lot of opinions about Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and influencer and LinkedIn and Medium, but there's very few practitioners. There's very few people that have actually placed the ads. There are very few people that understand that the creative is the variable when you place an ad, and just because you did it once doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It might mean that the creative, the video and the picture that you put out just sucked. 